Nimeamua kukufuata Yesu katika hali zote neno lako nalidhamini moyoni mwangu nitakuishia wewe ulie nifia nitasimama nitahesabika kwa wale walioishi kwa imani nitasimama
It is where I love to be, my God. Ele
Yes, 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 Lord, you are the most high God. Yes, Lord, you are the most high God. We declare you are the most high God. We declare you are the most high God. Yes, Lord, you are the most high God. You remain the most high God. You are the most high God. From generation to generation, your position cannot be moved. Your place cannot be changed. Your position is secure. Your place is secure. You are established. You are established. Most high God. Your throne endures forever. Your throne endures forever and ever. Your kingdom from generation, even unto generation. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You do not change. As I go away, the beginning of the end, the most high God, light of our salvation, the hope of glory. Blessed God, blessed Master, blessed King, blessed Savior. Shantanora Moria, I was Sayadin Eto, 
Abiding with us from generation to generation, season to season, times to times. You are God. From the beginning to the end, you do not change. Thank you, Jesus. Receive all the praise. Let's lift up our hands, even as we declare, you are God. From beginning to the end, you do not change. We can be experiencing change of times, but God, you do not change. Mm. You've got times and seasons in your hands. Jesus, you call for light out of darkness. You don't need a man to be the God you are, but you have chosen to call me your own. And you've got times and seasons in your hands. Jesus, you call for light out of You don't need a man to be the God you are, but you have chosen to call me your own.
times and seasons are in your hands. We can't challenge your time. We can't oppose your seasons. Because you are God. Even when they are not favorable, you remain to be God. Even when we are in battles, you remain to be God. And for this reason we say, we are submitted to your will. We are submitted to your counsel. We are submitted to your leading. Have your way. Because you are God. Receive all the glory and honor. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's appreciate our God once more. Appreciate our God. Amen. Thank you. May be seated. The Lord bless you. Good morning. Praise the name of Jesus. Let's appreciate our worship team for the love. We thank God for this day. This is the day that the Lord has made for us to rejoice and be glad in it. Praise the name of Jesus. And this morning and this day, I want us to take one, two minutes and pray for our nation. Praise the name of Jesus. We want to declare that Kenya belongs to God. We have prayed for the elections. We are now praying that God will not allow any human being to stir the emotions of Kenyans to cause animosity to bring division, to bring chaos. And as we declared during our time of prayer, we want to claim it again that no Kenyan will lose his life because of elections. There shall be no bloodshed. We want to declare that every word spoken to stir up hunger shall not find a landing in the heart of our people. That every word that is sent to stir hatred. Will be rejected by every Kenyan. I'm saying it will be rejected by every Kenyan. Praise the name of Jesus. Times and seasons are in the hands of God. He changes times. He changes seasons. He raises one. He brings another down. He is God in control of our land. And we want to tell him, God, Kenya is in your hands. It is not in the hands of our politicians. It is in his hands. And the times belong to him. And he chooses leaders for times and seasons for our purpose. Praise the name of Jesus. So I want us to be on our feet. And for one or two minutes, we are going to declare Kenya is safe. Praise the name of Jesus. And after we have made our prayer, I'm going to ask Bwana Joel Mbogwa to come and lead us to pray in agreement in the name of Jesus Christ. So after you have prayed over the nation of Kenya, I want each and every single person to say a word over Kenya. Okay? We are making a declaration. Kenya does not belong to the politicians. Kenya belongs to God. And no human being will be sacrificed for any leader to ascend to power. And any word, any word being spoken to stir up anger, to stir up hatred, to stir up commotion, to stir up war shall not be accepted in our hearts as citizens of Kenya. Are you hearing me? In the name of Jesus Christ. We had a young boy in the morning who made a prayer for our nation. 
a young boy and he prayed that we will not go back to 2007, 2008. When he was praying, I started imagining how old he was that time. How old he was. Huh? He was one year, but he has the history of what happened. So we reject bad history in our nation. Hey! We reject any bad history in our nation. Kenya belongs to Jesus. Raise up your voice and pray for this nation. Refuse any word. Cancel every word that has been spoken against our land. Cancel every word that has been spoken to stir anger and animosity in our ministry. In the name of Jesus Christ, I want to see you praying. I want to see you declaring that Kenya will not burn again. That Kenya will not be destroyed by the words of the politicians who are seeking their self gain. But this nation shall remain firm. This nation shall be established that any storm that is sent against this nation, right now we pray, Jesus arise and quench every storm. Jesus arise and declare be still. In the name of Jesus Christ, we want to declare Kenya, Kenya, Kenya. Once again, we declare, reject every person who is out to destroy your destiny. We speak to the soil of this land. We speak to the soil of this land. Do not accept the blood of our people. Do not accept the blood of our people because of politics. Do not accept the blood of our people because of chaos that is stirred up by politicians. In the name of Jesus, times and seasons are in your hands. Times and seasons are in your hands. And Father, we willingly receive your time. We willingly receive your season for this land. We receive the man you have chosen for us. The women you have chosen for us. Leaders of every kind that you have anointed. We receive them in the name of Jesus. We receive them in the name of Jesus. And Father, as we wait for the final declaration of the presidential elections, we declare whoever you have anointed, we shall accept Whoever you have anointed, let him be accepted in Kenya. In the mighty name of Jesus. And we pray today in the name of Jesus. Kenya will not go through pain again. Kenya will not go through pain again. Kenya will not go through destruction again. Kenya will not be reduced into a shell again. Our investments will not be destroyed. Our efforts will not be destroyed. God arise. Let the enemies of Kenya be scattered. Lord arise. Let the enemies of Kenya be scattered. Prove them, oh God, as you prove the wind. Oh, as you prove the smoke. As you prove the dust. Prove the enemies of this nation. In the name of Jesus Christ. Kenya shall not be destroyed. Our children will not suffer because of politics. Our economy will not suffer because of politics. We pray, let this nation be stable to the glory and for the honor of your name. Let's receive our brother to lead us as we pray in agreement. Let's agree with him as he prays over this nation in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Can you join the hand of your neighbor? Join the hand of your neighbor. Hold the hand of your neighbor even as we pray in agreement this morning in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we magnify your holy name this time of the morning, O oh God. As we surrender our lives unto you, God Almighty, Thank you because you have loved us, Lord, with an everlasting love, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. And you have given us this nation, O oh my Father, the nation that has a destiny, O oh God. Destiny, dear Lord, for this world, O oh God. God Almighty, in agreement this morning, 
We are surrendering this nation unto your hands, O my Father. We know how you love this nation, O God Almighty. And we are surrendering it unto your hands, O God, that you may hide it under the shadow of your wings, O God, in the mighty name of Jesus, O God. Thank you, my Father, O God Almighty, because you have good plans for this nation, O my Father. Plans not for evil, my God, but to give it hope and future, my God, in the mighty name of Jesus. And we thank you now because of the season we are in, O oh my Father. A season of directions, O oh my Father, O oh God. My Father, we continue to surrender this nation unto able hands, declaring, my Father, it is well with this nation, O oh my Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, O oh God. We are declaring you are reigning in this nation, O oh my Father. And no other is reigning, O oh my Father. No other God is reigning this nation, O oh my Father. It is you, mighty King, you are reigning, O oh my God. In the mighty name of Jesus, O oh God. And now we are praying, O oh my Father, that you awake your strong arm, O oh my Father, O oh God. And let this nation obtain joy and peace, O oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, O oh God. And the workers of iniquity, my Father, you have said they will perish, O oh God. You have said they will perish, O oh my Father. And that is what we are declaring in union to my Father this morning. That every weakness, O oh my Father, that is assisting this nation, my God, we will free in the mighty name of Jesus, O oh God. We will not, Jehovah Father, succeed in the mighty name of Jesus, O oh God. My Father, we thank you. Arise, O oh my God. And let the enemies of this nation, my father, disperse and scatter in the mighty name of Jesus. The haters of you, God Almighty, that are in this nation, my God, cause them to free in the mighty name of Jesus, O oh God. Those who have come against this nation in one way, O oh God, my father, let them free in seven ways, O oh my father. In the mighty name of Jesus, we are declaring this morning, my father, those who are assisting this nation to enter into its destiny, my God. My father, they are scattering in the name of Jesus. My father, we look and we'll see them never, O oh God. We'll see them no more in the mighty name of Jesus. My father, we thank you, my God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you because of what is happening, my father. We know, my father, you are in heaven and you are enthroned, oh my father, in the mighty name of Jesus. You are seeing every detail, my father, of what happening concerning the elections, oh my father. And we thank you, my God, because, my father, you are assisting the wicked, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. We will receive your glory, my father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Those who are concerned, my God, we surrender them unto your able hands, my Father, that you will continue to use them, my Father. My Father, to release what is your will, my God, in the mighty name of Jesus. In unity, we are rejecting the will of men. In the mighty name of Jesus, we are refusing humanity, my Father, and we are declaring the divine result of God in this nation in the name of Jesus. We are canceling bloodshed in the name of Jesus. This nation will not experience what it experienced in 2007 in the mighty name of Jesus. This erection, my God, their erection, my Father, with a difference because you show up, oh my God, and we will see your glory in the mighty name of Jesus, O oh God. You are out to help us, O oh my Father. We are calling you as Jehoshaphat, O oh my Father, who said this enemies are mighty. I am a neighbor in the name of Jesus. And you released your help, my Father. We are requesting your help also, my Father, like Jehoshaphat, O oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, O oh God. Confuse our enemies, O oh my God. Scatter them in the name of Jesus, O oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we are happy to know, my Father, that when we call you, O God, you are faithful in the name of Jesus. Because your faithfulness, O my Father, is like the sign rising of the sun and the setting of the same. In the mighty name of Jesus, O God, my Father, we thank you because, Jehovah, 
You are shining. This nation is shining, oh my Father. This nation is shining, oh my Father. And every darkness is clearing, my Father. Light is coming in this nation, oh my God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Everywhere darkness is hiding, my Father. Light is going, oh God. And darkness will not comprehend. In the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. We thank you, my Father. You are installing leaders in this nation, oh my Father. Leaders that fear you, O oh God. Because, my Father, time is coming in this nation, O oh God. The time you have said, O oh my Father, that the, when the righteous, O oh my God, reign, O oh my Father, there is peace, O oh God. And, Lord Almighty Jehovah, you are installing those righteous leaders in this nation in the mighty name of Jesus. Therefore, my Father, we are at rest. We are at a peace, O oh God. Because we know your arm, O oh my Father, is at work, O oh my God, in the mighty name of Jesus, O oh God. You are transpassing every area, Jehovah, of this nation, O oh my Father, and especially the area where the elections is taking place, O oh my Father, where, Jehovah, Father, the activities of declaring the results is taking place, O oh God. And we know, my Father, O oh God, we are emerging victorious, O oh God. This nation is emerging victorious, O oh God. Righteousness, Jehovah, will be exalted, O oh my Father. Wickedness, my Father, God Almighty, will go down in the mighty name of Jesus. Therefore, we thank you, my Father, because our eyes are unto you, O oh God. We are saying like David, O oh God, that we look unto the mountain. Where does our help come from? We are declaring our help is coming from you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Therefore this morning, dear Jehovah, oh God. As a house of God. As a church. We are declaring the great peace is coming upon this nation. Yes, great peace mm. is coming upon this nation. Yes. Great joy is coming upon this nation. Great victory is coming upon this nation mm. in the mighty name of Jesus. The workers of darkness will be ashamed, oh my Father. Mm. In the mighty name of Jesus, yes. we will see your glory. You will reign, oh my Father, in this nation forever. And we declare revival is coming in this nation, oh my Father. And this nation is entering into its destiny in the mighty name of Jesus. Mm. We pray this prayer in agreement, believing, oh God, that you have heard for it is in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. You may be seated. Glory to God. This is our confidence that when we call on the name of the Lord, he hears and answers our prayers. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. I'll ask our children to stand. We want to allow you to go to class. Any one of you wants to make a prayer for the Sunday school? Beautiful. Come. Please come and pray. Let's use the other microphone. Receive uh, Moaura to make a prayer for the kids. I also want you to declare Hamuta Chereweshua. Okay? Alright, pray. Yes, boy, it's my Lord of Prayer. Our dear and heavenly Father, I come before you this morning saying thank you for the gift of life, O oh Lord. Even thank you, Lord, for each one of us here gathered in your presence, in your presence, O oh Lord. Lord, we pray the Lord you may be with us as we go to our class, O oh Lord. We pray, Lord, for understanding and knowledge. Lord, we pray then, Lord, that the, pe the people who are in the Talent Center, O oh Lord, Lord, we pray that we shall not, be, they shall not go slow, Lord. And we pray, Lord, that for peace in our nation as, as the results are going to be announced, O oh Lord, Lord, we even pray, Lord, for our parents, for our pastor, Lord, even for our members who are gathered here in your presence, oh, Lord. Lord, we pray that, Lord, you are not the tail, you are the head, and it is in Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. The Lord bless you as you go to class. Enjoy your, your lesson. Your teachers are blessed. Amen. 
Good morning, everybody. We thank God for this Sunday. This is a great day. Amen. I want to appreciate our viewers. Thank you for joining us. Please put your hands together. Let's receive our viewers who are joining us. Thank you so much. We ask you that uh, you share our video. Share with your neighbor. Share with your friend. Let them know that we are now live. Let them also be blessed with us. I also want to appreciate each one of you. Those who are gathered here. I can see our old boys here this morning. Thank you for the visitors. We'll be able to appreciate you later on. But I want you to feel welcomed in the presence of God. Praise the name of Jesus. I want to share briefly this morning on a message I've entitled, Why God Raises Leaders. Why God Raises Leaders. We are in a season where God is giving us leaders. Leaders in every level, especially in the political arena of this nation. And it's important for you to know that besides the political leaders, God also raises leaders in failure sectors, departments, and, uh, and uh, organizations for our purpose. We have leaderships in the church. We have leaderships in, in the private sector, in our businesses. We have leaders of every cadre in this life. And there is a purpose why God raises leaders uh, who lead or who are above us. And I want to show you today why God raises leaders. Let's read together in the book of Romans chapter number 13. Romans chapter number 13 from verse 1. Romans chapter number 13 from verse 1. The Bible gives us a command. Romans 13 from verse 1. The Bible gives a command. Let every soul be subject to the governing authorities. This is not a request. It is a command that all of us, every human being, should be subject to the governing authorities. Why? For there is no authority except from God. When you see a man or a woman in a position of power, whether in your place of work or in the institution where you belong, or more so even in the nation, it should come to your understanding that they have been positioned there by God. For there is no authority except from God. And the authorities that exist are appointed by God. Praise the name of Jesus. Verses 2. Therefore, whoever resists the authority resists the ordinance of God. And those who resist will bring judgment on themselves. Praise the name of Jesus. Therefore, whoever resists the authority resists the ordinance of God. And those who resist will bring judgment on themselves. We move on. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to evil. Do you want to be unafraid and afraid of the authority? Do what is good, and you will have praise from the same. For he is God's minister. To you for good. But if you do evil, be afraid. If you don't pay your taxes, be afraid. If there are things you are cutting corners, be afraid. But if you are upright, you have nothing to be afraid of. For he does not bear the sword in vain. For he is God's minister. An avenger to execute wrath on him who practices evil. Therefore... You must be subject, not only because of wrath, but also for conscience sake. Move on. For because of this, you also pay taxes. 
For they are God's ministers attending continually to this very thing. Render therefore to all their due. Those who are due taxes, to whom taxes are due. Customs to whom customs, fear to whom fear, and honor to him that honor is due. Praise the name of Jesus. This is a scripture or a portion in our Bible that gives us direction on how we should receive and how to behave before our leaders. The Bible says there is no authority other than that which God has established. And in this nation, at such a time like this, God is establishing leadership right from the grassroots all through to the national. Praise the name of Jesus. And they will be leaders ordained by the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. And if you are living a life that is right, you are not practicing evil. You are not a law breaker. It doesn't matter who takes the sword. Praise the name of Jesus. They will not be there for your harm, but for your good. They will not be there for your destruction. Because they are not given that power to destroy our lives, but to take care of our lives. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. I want to give you six reasons why God raises leaders. And any leader that you see, whether in politics, in organizations, in any position, this is the reason why God has raised them. Number one, God raises leaders to fight his battles and bring deliverance for his people. When you see God raising a leader, it is so that that leader can fight his battles and bring deliverance for his people. That is why the Bible says they are there for your good and not for your harm. They are there for your good. They are there to fight for you. Your boss is not your enemy. Your member of parliament is not your enemy. They should be there for your good. For if God has positioned them there, it is so that they can fight your battles. When God saw the oppression and the pain of his people in Egypt, he raised a Moses. He raised a Moses. And the Bible says that he sends Moses to Egypt. He says to him in Exodus chapter number 3 from verse 7. He says to he says and the Lord said I have surely seen the affliction of my people who are in Egypt. One thing with our God when he sees your affliction he doesn't remain silent. When God sees your pain and you are a righteous man, you belong to him. He doesn't remain silent. Praise the name of Jesus. I have surely seen the affliction of my people who are in Egypt. Number two, I have heard their cry because of their task masters and oppressors. For I know their sorrows and the sufferings and the trials. The good thing with our God, he is all-knowing. He knows your afflictions. He knows your pain. He knows your tears. He knows how you have been oppressed by the taskmasters and the oppressors. Praise the name of Jesus. And what did he do when he saw their pain? The Bible says... And I have come down. So when God is sending Moses to Egypt, it is God himself who is going to Egypt in a human body. Praise the name of Jesus. He takes the body of Moses 
to go and face Pharaoh. He says, you shall be a God before Pharaoh. I have come down to deliver them from the hand and the power of the Egyptians and bring them up out of that land to a land, to a good land, to a land good and large, a land flow with milk and honey, a land of plenty, to the place of the Canaanite, the Hittite, the Amorite, the Perisite, the Hivite, and the Chepusite. Now behold the cry of the Israelites has come to me. And I have also seen how the Egyptians oppressed them. Verse 10. Come now therefore and I will send you to Pharaoh. That you may bring forth my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. So what does he do when he sees the oppression? When he sees the tears? When he sees the sorrows? He raises a leader. And he sends him so that he can fight his battles. So when the fleas are coming on the land, it is not the doing of Moses. When the frogs leave the, 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 the sea, it is not the doing of Moses. It is Mo God using Moses to fight his battles on, on his behalf. To fight the battles of his people on his behalf. Praise the name of Jesus. So when God sees the pain of your poverty, he will raise up a man to start an organization that will deliver you from your poverty. When God sees your tears because of the pain in your body, he will either divinely heal you or raise a leader in the name of a doctor to handle your disease. Praise the name of Jesus. When God sees your tears, he works by raising a leader who will create an environment where your tears will be wiped away. So he raises Moses to go and fight his battles, to go and deliver his people. Praise the name of Jesus. So God raises leaders to fight his battles. The children of Israel are confronted by the Israelites. Sorry, by the Philistines. A giant stands for 40 days. And he says, give me a man. Let him come forth and fight me. If he, he beat me, we become your slaves. If I defeat him, you become our slaves. And for 40 days, there is no single man who could offer himself to fight Goliath. The Bible says a young boy by the name David, a shepherd in the field, has just been anointed by Samuel to be the king over Israel. He comes to bring food and see how his brothers are faring. And then he hears the giant mocking the people of God. And David says, I will fight him. I will fight him. I will take away the mockery from the people of God. And the Bible says, Saul tells David, you are a young boy. You cannot fight this giant. He has been fighting this war. From the time he was young, he is experienced than you are. But David says to Saul, you should not worry. I have been fighting the battles of God. I have handled a lion. I have handled a bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them. David comes to the battlefield. When Goliath sees the young boy, he says, today I will destroy you. You are coming to me with a stone. And with a, child, with, a, with a sling. Huh? Am I a dog? But what does David say? Praise the name of Jesus. Can you give me uh, First Samuel chapter number 16? Let's see. What does Samuel say? 17, sorry. Chapter number 17. From verse 45. 
Then David said to the Philistines, look at what he says. You come to me with a sword, with a spear, and with a javelin. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. In other words, this battle, I am not fighting on my own. I am fighting for God. I am fighting the battle of God. I am not fighting my battle. I am fighting the battle of God on behalf of his people. And he says, verse 46, this day, he does not say I, but the Lord will deliver you into my hand. And I will strike you and take your head from you. And this day, I will give the carcass of the camp of the Philistines to the birds of the air and the wild beasts of the earth. That all the earth may know that there is God in Israel. When God raises a leader, he raises a leader to fight your battles and to bring your deliverance. That day, David brought down Goliath and there was great salvation for the Israelites. Anytime God raises a leader, he is coming to fight your battles. He is coming to raise the ground for you. He is coming to bring you a deliverance. And I declare, may God raise a leader in Kenya who will fight our battles. May God raise a leader in your life who will bring you a deliverance. I declare in this land, may God eliminate leaders who is coming to bring more trouble and more pain to us. In the name of Jesus Christ. When God raises a leader, it is for your good. Number two, God raises leaders to establish his will and plan for his people. I want you to know that when God raises a leader, it is to establish his will and a plan for you. To establish his will and his plan for you. God says, I know the plans I have towards you. Praise the name of Jesus. There are plans for welfare and not for evil. There are plans to give you a hope and to give you a future. A leader raised by God is a leader who comes to establish his will and his plan upon your life. There is somewhere God wants to take you. There is a destiny ordained for you. Hallelujah. There is a place called the promised land for each one of us. There is a place for you. And for you to get there, God will raise a leader. So I have come down, he says, to deliver them from the hand of the Egyptian and to bring them up from that land. Where am I taking them? I'm taking them to a land that is good and large. A land flowing with milk and honey. I have prepared a place for them. I have prepared a land for them. I had a plan where to take them. And for them to get there, they need a leader. For you to enter your destiny, you need a leader. That teacher in school is your leader. To take you to your career. To take you to your destiny. To take you to the dreams of your heart. Praise the name of Jesus. That boss you are working with. He is your leader. He is the man or the woman. That God has raised. So that he can establish his will. Over your life. Anytime God raises a leader is so that his will may be established. He, does, he doesn't just put leaders. He has a will to establish. He has a plan to fulfill. Huh? He has a plan. He has a plan. And for that plan to be fulfilled, he raises a leader. He had to prepare Moses long 
before his mother could understand what is happening. Moses is born at a time when, people, when young boys are being killed. And the mother says, I'm not going to kill my son. I'm not going to see this boy die. They go and throw him in the Nile, on the Nile. And at that particular time, the daughter of Pharaoh is coming to take a shower. God did not allow the daughter of somebody else to come. Somebody else could have come at that time. But because he has a plan, he puts all things in place to work according to his plan. He had to take Moses to Egypt and to take him to the palace so that he can understand the operations of the palace. He can understand where Pharaoh sits so that when he brings him back to deliver his people, he will know his way around. He will know where to get Pharaoh. He prepared it in advance because he had a plan. When God looks at you, he does not see you are today. He sees you are 40 years to come. He sees you are 20 years to come. He sees you are 50 years to come. And as he takes you to your 50 years, he is putting a plan in place that will usher you to your destiny by raising the right leaders. There is somebody you don't know that God is positioning in the path of your life so that his plan will be fulfilled. There is somebody he is positioning so that his will will be established. Praise the name of Jesus. It might not be known to us. We might not understand it. We might not even see it. We do not even comprehend it. But God is putting things in place so that his plan will be fulfilled in your life. God prepared in advance. He allowed David to fight a lion. So that when he faces a human being, he will not be scared. He allowed him to fight a pair. To him he was rescuing the sheep of his father. <laughs> to him he was making sure that what has been entrusted to him is not lost. But before God, it was a preparation. So that when the right time comes, he can fulfill his will over his people. Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor. Tell your neighbor your life is not an accident. Tell your neighbor your life is not an accident. Tell your neighbor what is hidden from you is clear before God. Tell your neighbor fear nothing. To establish his will and plan for his people. Number three. God raises leaders to punish evil. And release, and release his visions. To punish evil and release his visions. God raises leaders to punish evil and release his visions. Praise the name of Jesus. Sometimes when you see God raising leaders and you feel threatened, it could be for a purpose so that he can punish evil. So that he can release his visions. Amen. God says, visions is mine. Do not revenge. Leave it to me. So for God to release his visions, he will raise a leader. He will raise a leader. Praise the name of Jesus. The book of 1 Kings chapter number 13 from verse 1. 1 Kings 13 from verse 1. And behold a man of God from Judah. Of Beth, Bethel. By the word, sorry. From Judah to Bethel. And behold a man of God went from Judah to Bethel. By the word of the Lord. And Jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense. Then he cried out against the altar by the word of the Lord and said, 
O altar, altar, that says the Lord. Behold, a child, Josiah by name, shall be born to the house of David. And on you he shall sacrifice the priests of the high places who burn incense on you. And men's bones shall be burned on you. And he gave a sign the same day saying, This is the sign which the Lord has spoken. Surely the altar shall split apart. And the ashes on it shall be poured out. So a man of God is making a declaration. That there is a boy who will be born. He is not yet born. He will be born for a purpose. So that he can execute punishment on behalf of God. He will destroy the priests who sacrifice to idols. And on the same altar where Jeroboam, you are offering a sacrifice against the will of God. He will burn the bones of those priests on you. Second Kings chapter number 22. The boy is born. And the Bible says, Second Kings chapter number 22. The Bible says, Second Kings Josiah was eight years old when he became king and he reigned 31 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Jedida, the son of Adiah or Poskat. And he did what was right in the sight of the Lord and walked in all the ways of his father David and did not turn aside to the right hand or to the left. The Bible says that boy who was prophesied many, many years was born. And eight years into his life on earth, he ascends to the throne. Eight years. Eight years. In this nation, there is a constitution that it says you cannot ascend to power until you attain 30, 30, 35 years. You can't be the president of Kenya. Is it? Yes. But now God is raising a leader for his purpose to punish wickedness, to punish sin, to punish idol worship. And this leader ascends to power when he is eight years. How old is that boy there? David? Seven. Eleven. Okay. Can you come? Run. This, <laughs> this boy is eleven years. Can you, go, can you go to the Sunday school and get me an eight-year-old boy quickly? Let a young man go like Evans. Eight years. I want to show you God does not just put people into power. He has a purpose. This one is 11. So imagine you are too old. You are older than Josiah. When he ascended to power. Yani we ni muzee. Josiah was younger than you. A leader over a nation. Tell your neighbor it is God who raises leaders. Tell your neighbor stop trembling. Tell your neighbor don't be scared. You are not telling your neighbor you are telling me. Tell your neighbor don't be scared. Praise the name of Jesus. Just remain there please. Don't fear. Nobody will beat you. If they try I will defend you. Amen. To punish this boy comes to power at eight years. I want to show you what he did. Let's go to 2 Samuel 27, 2 Kings 
23. Give me from verse 14. When he, <laughs> when he ascended to power. Amen. Just come, young man. Just come courageously. Now Josiah is here. Clap your hands. So Josiah was this size or this age when he ascended to power. Imagine. The plan of God is quite different from the plans of men. Eight years he becomes a king. And the Bible says he reigned for 31 years. So when he becomes a king, look at what the young boy did. Give me the scriptures. You are my colleagues today. Look. And he broke in pieces the sacred pillars and cut down the wooden images and filled their places with the bones of who? Of men. This is a young boy. Give me the, continue. Moreover, the altar that was at Bethel. You remember that altar? Ha. Huh. That place, that thing is really bothering us. Let me read from my Bible. Moreover, the altar that was in at Bethel and the high place with Jeroboam, the son of Napeth, who made Israel sin had made, put that altar and the high place he broke down. And he burned the high place and crushed it with to powder and burned the wooden image. As Josiah turned, he saw the tombs that were there on the mountain. And he set and took the bones out of the tombs and burned them on the altar. And defied, according, defied it according to the word of the Lord, which the man of God proclaimed. Who, which the man of God proclaimed. Who proclaimed these words. So you see, a young boy ascends to a position of power. And God uses him to punish evil. To execute his visions. He even unearthed the bones of the priests who were sacrificing to idols. And he burns their bones on the altar at Bethel. A young boy. God does not just raise leaders. He raises a leader to punish and execute his visions. Praise the name of Jesus. So when you see a leader in power, that is why the Bible says, if you are doing what is right, you should not fear. Because they are God's messengers. God's servants. To work for good and not for our evil. Praise the name of Jesus. I declare in the name of Jesus, you shall be leaders. You shall be, as I've used you as an example, you shall grow to become a leader. I declare you shall be a great leader. In the name of Jesus Christ, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you healthy and strong as you grow. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. To punish. So when people refuse to listen to God, when people refuse to listen to warnings, when people refuse to listen to correction, when people refuse to follow the ways of God, God will raise a leader. He raise a leader. When the kings of Israel refused to repent, to follow the ways of God, the way of their father David. The Bible says he raised Nebuchadnezzar. A wicked king. His soldiers came to Jerusalem. They burned it down. They arrested the king. Jeconiah. The Bible says they plucked out his eyes. But before they plucked his eyes. They killed his seven sons. When he was watching. Seven of them. And then they plucked off his eyes and tied him in feathers and dragged him to Babylon. Because they refused 
to hearken to the voice of God. When people refuse to hear God, when people refuse to humble, God will raise a leader. He raise a leader. I refuse. This nation will not be punished. Our ears will hear God. Our ears will hear God. God will not raise punishment over your life. Your ears will be attentive to the voice of the Lord, our God. Can you say amen? God raises leaders to act as a bridge between one season and another. When God raises a leader, he raises a leader to act as a bridge. There are leaders who are raised for the sake of transition from one season to another season. I have seen that in our lives. I have seen that in our nation. Praise the name of Jesus. A time came, God says, I have to transition you from the season of darkness into light. He raised the leader. Praise the name of Jesus. There is a time in this land we suffered a lot in this region. We could not access electricity. This place we used to live in darkness for many, many years. We could not access power in this land. God raised a member of parliament. He is now the late Mirugi Karioki. Mirugi Karioki was the member of parliament for Nakuru. This area was under Supukia constituency. Praise the name of Jesus. So Mirugi Karioki came to this area, crossed the border of his constituency, and got up to Ndimo. He went down to the ADC and brought electricity, high voltage, three lines. How do you call it? The three cables, the three phase, three phase. All the way from ADC to Ndimo Primary School. He said, I'm helping our children here in Ndimo Primary School to get the power. But in the real sense, God used him to bring light, to bring electricity into our area. That is when we were able to get power. We had struggled for years and for ages. Praise the name of Jesus. And unfortunately, he did not live for long. He came as a transition from one season to another. And when his time was done, the Lord called him back home. He comes for a season. Praise the name of Jesus. One season to another. The Lord can raise a man. I remember when he went to apply for electricity. We were given a quotation for the church. 836,000. We were told you are far away from a transformer. So one day I went to Kenya Power Offices. And as I entered the planning department, a certain man saw me. He asked me, Pastor, why are you here? I told him I've come because I'm in trouble. Which trouble, Pastor? I told him, we have applied for electricity. And uh, your people have given us a quotation claiming we are not near a transformer. And yet our immediate neighbor, this neighbor here, had the power. Then I asked them, how comes our immediate neighbor, separated only with a fence, is not far away from a transformer? But we, the church, we are far away. He told me, Give me your quotation. He took it. Went to his computer. And then told me this man who has done this job. This is his behavior. He came to survey. And because you are not there. So that he can manipulate you to give a, a bribe. He decided to punish you. He called him and told him. Can you make a correction? Can you make sure that the church gets power? The man went back to his computer and after a few days we received a fresh quotation of 35,000. Now listen. Listen. From that day today as I talk 
I've never met that man again. The man who helped us <laughs> to get power to the church. We have never met. To date, God raised him as a bridge between our season of suffering and our season of victory. And that, that his job was done. God never allowed me. I've never met him. I've never seen him again. Maybe I'm talking to myself. But I'm enjoying myself. <laughs> never met again. To date. But when he saw me, he identified me. And he assisted me. May the Lord raise leaders who will be your preach from one season to another. He could be just a man seated on the interview panel and God places him there not because he qualifies to be in the but because he is there to transition you from one season to another. I remember one day I was coming from Unjoro driving to Nakuru and unfortunately Okay, before I went to Njoro, I'd gone to a mechanic. I'd gone to a mechanic. Because there was some noise on my car. So I went to the mechanic to check what type of noise is this. So he handled it, tells me this, the brakes that have a challenge, I've handled them, it's okay. Now, the mechanic did not uh, screw the nut himself. He gave it to a young boy whom he was training to be a mechanic. So this boy did not tighten the nuts for my wheel. So I drove to Njoro with loose nuts. As I was coming down from Njoro, you know the slope, as I'm approaching the highway, I saw a tire in front of me. I wondered, where is this tire coming from? Then all of a sudden, I started hearing my car skidding. So I discovered the wheel. All the stands have been broken and the wheel has gone out. So I'm driving a car with three wheels. Thank God I was not speeding. So I come slowly and stop. Then out of nowhere a man comes and then tells me, what is happening here? He was driving a tour car, a tour fan. A fan from a tour farm. Hey, what are you doing here? I told him I'm coming from Unjoro. This and this has happened. Ah, sorry, sorry. Then he tells me, let me help you. He comes with his jacks. We lift up the car. He returns <laughs> the wheel and then screws the, 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 three, the, three, the, the three stands of the wheel that had remained. So one had broken. The, the other screws had uh, just disappeared. So there was one or two that we were able to rocket. So he helped me to put the wheel back so that I can get to the mechanic. Since that day, to date, we have never talked again. He came to change my season of pain. He came as an angel of deliverance. God can raise a leader to be our angel of deliverance. To lift us from one season to another. It could be a season of tears to a season of joy. It could be a season of pain to a season of celebration. And once their job is done, the Lord eliminates them from the sin. May the Lord raise a leader in your life. There are people here who only need one leader and your season of poverty is over. Your season of lack is over. Your season of pain is over. Praise the name of Jesus. God raises leaders, number five, to bring joy and gladness in the hearts of his people. To bring joy and gladness in the hearts of his people. Judges chapter number eight and verse 28. Judges 8, 28. The Bible says, Judges 8, Verse 28. 
Thus Midian was subdued before the children of Israel. So that they lifted their heads no more. So during the time of Gideon, he silenced the Midianites. The Midianites were the people who used to destroy the farms of the Israelites. They wait until they are planted and their wheat are up and then they release their animals. So Gideon is found hiding his wheat and threshing it in a threshing floor. And then the Lord appears to him and he tells him you are the one who is going to deliver Israel from the Midianites. And then Gideon is worried. How, how, how can I do it? How will I do it? Even our clan is the least. We are not known. I can't be a leader. I can't lead the people. I can't fight for these people. God tells him, go in that power. You are powerful. You are going to do it. And he fought the Midianites. The Bible says he subdued them. They could not lift their heads again. And what does the Bible say? And the Bible says, and the country was quiet for 40 years in the days of Gideon. What, is, what does it mean that the country was quiet? Other translation says that the country was at peace for 40 years. Peace means a time of joy. It means a time of gladness. It means a time when there is no war. A time when there is no war. A time when things are good. God raises leaders so that he can bring joy and gladness in their hearts. Praise the name of Jesus. There is a time when God raises leaders just to bring joy and gladness. David was a man who fought battles. Solomon did not fight battles. He led the people to build the sanctuary. He led the people to develop the country. He led the people to enjoy life. David led people to fight. This one led people to be happy. Praise the name of Jesus. Ah, are you lost? Are we together? I'm showing you why God raises leaders. It is God who raises leaders, not our votes. It is God. Amen? To bring joy and gladness in our hearts and in the lives of his people. So there are leaders that God is causing to struggle so that you can have joy and gladness. So that you can enjoy your soup and your milk and honey. Amen? They are lacking the sleep so that they can invest. They can start industries. They can start organizations. They can start businesses which are going to be a source of your joy and gladness. When you graduate from that university, you will find a platform already prepared by somebody who has sweated for you. Uh, amen. There are people who have labored to plow the barren land, to establish things so that when you come, you are able to be happy, you are able to enjoy, you are able to be glad. It is God who has raised them for your sake. Amen. Uh -huh. Then last but not least, I don't want to keep you any longer. Last, God raises leaders as a submissive will to the demands of his people. As a submissive will to the demands of his people. There are times God raises leaders just as a, sub a submissive will. He has nothing else to do. You have persisted, you have resisted, you have said it has to be my way, it has to be done now, and if it is not now, right now, then God says, if that is what you want, have it. Praise the name of Jesus. And this is the worst kind of leadership that God can give to you. Leadership where 
he has just submitted to your demand submitted to your cry you are not ready for him to show you you want it your way god says if you want it your way have it if that is how you want it i let it happen it is called a submissive way or a submissive will to your demands i pray that god will not give us a leader god will not give you any leader in the journey of your life because you have demanded you have forced your way you want to have it come rain come drought it has to be your way and then god says okay if that is what you want then have it there are people who cannot wait huh there are people who cannot wait there are people who cannot listen to god there are people who cannot be warned so when you insist it has to be the time I want. Amen. The way I want. Then God says, okay, have it. That kind of leadership brings pain. It brings struggles. It brings frustrations. It brings tears. But since you demanded it, he says, have it. Listen to me, young girls. When you get married, you are submitting yourself under leadership. You are submitting yourself under a leadership. A husband is a leader over your life. Don't demand your way. Don't allow God to give you a husband submiss free. Let his will be done. Because if you say, I have to be married this year, Come rain, come drought. You will say, okay. There is also another nyangau that wants to marry this year. So I give it to you. Be under that leadership. And then you start bringing in prayer points. Pray for me. Pray that this nyangau can stop snoring. That they can stop using their cross over my body. Pray, pray, please. Pray, pastor. Pray. But when God gives you his will, you shall be happy. You shall be joyful. And you shall be glad. You shall know it is God who has blessed me. Not my way. God can give a nation. Can give you a leader. Submiss free. He can tell you don't, 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 don't join this company. This job is not good for you. But some of us, because we need jobs deliberately, uh, uh, desperately, we need jobs desperately. You are willing to work even in environments that are not godly because you need money. Some of us are driven out of the will of God just because you want to make money. God tells you, wait a minute. I'm preparing you a land of milk and honey. You say it has to be now. All oh, my age mates are working. Why not me? And God says, okay. That is what you want. Have it. Three months down the line, the fear of God is plucked out of your heart. The fire of God is taken away. You no longer, you are no longer able to have your way. It has to be his way or her way. You become a prisoner. How many girls have heard there is pain when you go to work in certain countries? But they are saying, I could rather go and suffer making money than stay here in Kenya where there is no money. God says, that is what you want? Okay, you go. You go. Go and cry there rather than here. But if you allowed me to have my way, I will prepare a table for you right where you think your enemies are. I will make a way for you when the right season comes right where you are. But because it has to be your way, he says, okay, listen, not every door that you see open has been opened by God. You can't say, man, maybe I'm too fast. Not every door that is open has been opened by God. Not every door, not every opportunity is from God. There are doors that have been opened 
because you have pushed for them you have demanded you have insisted it has to come and god says okay okay that's what you want have it that's what you want have it god raises a leader as a submissive will to the demands of his people the israelites said we need a king like every other nation we don't want to be led by your sons samuel we need a king first samuel 8 verse 19 and 20 we need a king like any other nation i need a husband like any other girl i need a job like any other kenyan i need this like any other person god says no 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 wait a minute i have my timing i have my season i have my way you say no no it has to come now and god says okay you need it have it you want it take it but it does not lead to joy and grandness i pray for you today that god will raise leaders that will fulfill number one the purpose of fighting your battles and bringing your deliverance that the lord will raise leaders in your life to establish his will and plan for you that god will raise a leader or leaders in the journey of your life who will punish evil and release his visions that god will raise leaders who will act as a bridge between one season and another that god will raise leaders to bring you joy and gladness in your heart. Praise the name of Jesus. And that God will not raise a leader in your life. Because you have demanded. It will not be a submissive will. But God will raise leaders from his own heart for your life. Praise the name of Jesus. I want us to stand and make a prayer this morning. I want us to tell God, oh God any leadership that you raise in my life as i take this journey let them be leaders let them be leaders that you have raised to fight for me let them be leaders that you have raised to establish your will let them be leaders that you have raised to punish evil that i may enjoy your victory that i may be glad in my life let it be leaders you have brought to change the seasons of my life in the name of jesus christ and today, Father, give me the patience that I need so that I don't demand my way. It doesn't have to be my way, but let always your will be done over my life in the name of Jesus. I have said the leadership that raises into power are not only for this season, but they are for the years that lie ahead of you. I want you to pray that every leadership that shall be ordained on your path shall be leaders that fulfill the will of God. Leaders that have come from the heart of the Father in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Open up your mouth and pray for yourself. Open up your mouth and pray for yourself. Tell God I ask for leaders. I know I am in a journey. I know I'm taking a journey in this life. I know I'm taking a journey in this life. And in every season I'll need a leader. Every time I will need a leader. I pray my father. Raise leaders in the journey of my life. That will fight for me. My battles. That will come as my deliverance. In the name of Jesus. To usher my deliverance. To bring my deliverance. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, call on the name of the Lord. Call on the name of the Lord this morning moment. Call on his name. Tell him, God, raise, raise leaders. Raise leaders in my life. Raise leaders in this journey. Raise leaders, oh God. Leaders, my God. Leaders, oh God, who will fight my battles. Leaders, oh God, who will bring my deliverance. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Who will bring my deliverance. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lead us, lead us, lead us. Who will fight my battles? Who will fight my battles? I refuse to fight battles on my own. I refuse to chart my way. My father raised leaders for me, oh God. For us, oh God. Even as a nation, even as a family. Raise leaders. Raise leaders. Fight our battles. 
who will fight our battles, who will fight our battles like Moses, who will fight our battles like David, who will fight our battles in the name of Jesus and bring our deliverance and bring our deliverance in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And bring deliverance. Yes, Lord, bring deliverance. Bring deliverance, Lord. In us will bring deliverance. In the name of Jesus. Now raise your voice and pray for leaders in your life. Who shall establish the will of God? Who shall establish the will of God? Who shall establish the plan of God? Who shall fulfill the plan of God? Tell God in my life. Tell God in our nation. Tell God in my channel. My father in my lifetime. Raise leaders. Who shall establish your will in the channel of my life? As I go through this journey, leaders who shall establish your will, who shall establish your will, leaders who shall establish your will, my God, my God, your plan, your plan, yes Lord, let me leaders in my journey, in my life, who shall establish your will, who shall fulfill your plan, in the name of Jesus. 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 Establish your will through the leadership. Establish your will through every leadership. In the name of Jesus. Pray, pray now. Tell the Lord. Raise leaders who will punish evil. Raise leaders who will punish evil. Raise leaders who will punish evil. And execute your vision. Execute your vision. Execute your vision. Raise leaders who will not tolerate evil. Who will not accommodate idol worship. Who will not allow the peace of power. They are shared upon to remain standing. Who will not accommodate my father paganism in my life. In the name of Jesus. Leaders will not be sleeping. From your will. But if people who shall punish evil. People who shall punish evil. People who shall show us where we are wrong. Where we have missed your mark. People my father. Who shall stand on your side. Blessing out to our people. May you raise leaders for us. Who are going to lead us to our prosperity. Leaders who are going to lead us to our promised land. Leaders who are going to promote peace in this nation. They will punish evil. May you raise Punish evil. Punish evil. Execute your visions. 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 In the name of Jesus Christ. Follow the dream of God in this land. Let your mind stand upon our nation. My God, let your will be done upon our land. Let your plan be established by our leaders in this nation. Let your will be done upon our nation. Let your will be done upon our land. Let your will be done upon our land. Who will change our seasons? Who will change our seasons? Who will change our seasons? Who will be a preacher between one season and another? Who will be a preacher? Leaders will be preached between one season and another. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I call upon leaders who will be joy and gladness. Joy and gladness. Joy and gladness. Joy and kindness, joy and kindness. In the name of Jesus, I refuse leaders who are coming my way because of my demand, because I want it my way. I refuse a submissive leader from your heart, a submissive leader from your heart.
Lord, I need your perfect will. Let your perfect will. My God, let your will be established upon our land. May you give us leaders who are God fearing. May you give us leaders who are going to know your heart for the nation, my Father God. Who are going to establish your plan for the nation. Lead us after your heart. My Father, I pray that you shall. That my seasons will be complete. My channel will be complete. My channel will be connected. Lacking no connector in the area of leadership. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. Father, we are lifting our lives into your hands. I want to say to you, leaders will be with you to the end of your life. You shall always be under a leader in one way or another. It could be in your spiritual life, you will be under a leader. It could be in your physical life, in your place of work, in the political arena. There will always be leaders all through your life. Somebody occupying a place of leadership. Somebody you are looking up to. All the days of your life. There is no single season of your life. Where there shall be no leader. Today I pray for you. That God will raise leaders. In your life. Who will fight your battles. Who will bring your deliverance. That God will raise leaders all through the journey of your life who shall establish his will and fulfill his plan. That God will raise leaders who will punish evil and execute his visions. That God will raise a leader in your life that will change your seasons. Seasons of pain to joy. Seasons of lack to plenty. Seasons of crying to rejoicing. Seasons of sorrow to seasons of gladness. That God will raise leaders who will cause your heart to have joy and gladness. I pray for you today that God will not allow a submissive leader out of his submissive will. He will not answer to your demands because you have persisted. But he will be rich of mercy to make sure that every leader fulfills a good purpose from his heart towards you. I commit you to God. All the days you shall live on earth, wherever you shall go, whatever you shall experience, every place of your landing, you shall find leaders who shall work the purposes of God for your life. I commit you to the hands of God. I declare that you shall not enter a season of weeping and wailing, but a season of joy and gladness as you are taken through the seasons of your life. I commit you to God in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Clap your hands to Jesus. Lift up your hands above your head and clap your hands to Jesus. Yes. Now listen. I don't know for how many years you will be on earth. I don't know where you will land here on earth. I don't know. There is a possibility you could not be in Kenya forever. There is a possibility you will be in Kenya. I don't know where your career will land you. I don't know where your profession will land you. I don't know the next season of your life where you will land but my prayer for you is that in every place where you will find yourself, God will position a leader who will fulfill his purpose over your life. 
be it in your place of work, be it in your marriage, be it in business, be it in the spiritual circles, that the Lord will position a leader who will fulfill his will over your life. You will not land in the hands of wicked leadership. You will not land in the hands of the submissive leaders from God, but leaders who are ordained for your next level and your prosperity in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Clap your hands to Jesus. I commit your life to the hands of God. I commit your life to the hands of God. I commit your life to the hands of God. I declare from today God takes over. It is not wrong about you. Let it be about him. It is not about you. Let it be about him. Let there be divine connections. Let there be divine connections. Let there be divine landing. Let there be divine landing. Wherever you land, let God work divinely. Let God do it for you in the name of Jesus Christ. And even over this nation, the will of God will be done. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. You are here today, standing in this place and all watching us, and you have not made Jesus the leader of your life. In this life, you can only have two leaders. In this life, two leaders. Forget about the leadership that we are talking about. But when it comes to your spiritual life, you have only two leaders. One, Jesus Christ. The other, the devil. When it comes to your spiritual life, you have only two leaders. And you must make a choice who leads you. Who leads you. You must make a This is where you have the power to make a choice. God will not force his way. He gives you power. He says, I said before you, life and death. Blessings and curses. Choose today. Choose. Choose. You need to choose life. You need to choose blessings. And how do you do that? By surrendering your life to Christ. You have to surrender your life to the leadership of Christ. Make a choice to allow Jesus to lead you. You're watching me today and you're saying I want to surrender my life to the leadership of Christ. I don't want to be led by the devil. I don't want to be destroyed. I don't want to be killed. I want life and life in abundance. Right where you are, make this prayer with me. Say dear Lord Jesus, Dear Lord Jesus, Dear Lord Jesus, this afternoon, this afternoon, I make a choice. I make a choice to submit my life to submit my life to the leadership of Christ. To the leadership of Christ. Now, now I ask you, I ask you to forgive my sins, to forgive my sins and to cleanse me. And, and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. From all unrighteousness. I surrender my life to you. I surrender my life to you. And today I confess. And today I confess that you are Lord. That you are Lord and Savior. And Savior of my life. Of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 You're watching us. You have made that prayer. Today you have submitted yourself to the leadership of Christ. He will lead you. He will guide you. He will order your steps. And he will fight your battles. Write on that page. My name is so and so. I've watched you today. I've given my life to Christ. This is my contact. And we'll talk to you. We'll lead you. We'll help you. Find a place where you will grow in Christ. In the name of Jesus, the Lord bless you and the Lord keep you under his leadership in Jesus' name.
And before we release you this afternoon, we bring to you our pay bill number and also our PayPal number. We are giving you that number so that you get an opportunity to give your offering and to give your tithe. Take that number, give your offering, give your tithe. Be part of building the kingdom of God through your finances. So right where you are, join us and give to the glory of God in Jesus' name. Till Wednesday when we see you again, we say God bless you and may you enjoy his leadership and the leaders he puts over you in every stage of your life in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Let's appreciate our viewers.